So I often get asked by YouTubers all the time, who do I have to blow to find a 4K HDR monitor that I can game, watch, and create content with? I've actually never been asked that, but if I had been, I'd say let's take a look at what BenQ has to offer. More specifically, the EW3270U. So what BenQ is giving us here is a 32 inch VA panel with a resolution of 3840 by 2160, 3000 to one contrast ratio, 300 nits of brightness and awesome color accuracy with around 143% sRGB rating and a 95% DCI-P3 rating in 10 bit color. So what that means is if you're into content creation of any type, Type, this monitor has the numbers you want and with that 4k resolution you'll be able to zoom in and color correct people's skin pores if you wanted to although that that'd be pretty gross and so maybe just stick to the skin tones when it comes to gaming it'll handle it just fine but don't expect crazy refresh rates or anything because while it does have free sync, we're only looking at 60 Hertz, but with a four millisecond response time. And while I do notice a pretty fair difference between this monitor and my Acer Predator at 120 Hertz, 60 Hertz has been just fine and is just fine for the vast majority of people. But then you throw in 4K and HDR and we're looking at some next level shit here. So the only game I have at the moment that supports HDR is Battlefield 1. Now, when I first fired it up on this monitor, I was like, wow, look at the D detail 4K provides, this is great. And then I went and toggled on HDR and instantly had to wipe the sweat from my forehead. It looks awesome. And obviously since we're working with HDR here, watching HDR content is a must. Unfortunately, there isn't a ton out there, but we've got some options on Netflix and Amazon and even here on YouTube. And when you do find something with the color specs behind this monitor, it looks so good. Now, because watching HDR content requires a true HDR source, BenQ has tried to help us out a bit with non-HDR source content by including HDR emulation with the push of a dedicated button. This will try and artificially make the shadows darker and highlights brighter. Personally, I found that for around 90% of stuff, it made the image look like shit. There's this little what looks to me like a digital nutsack, but is actually the brightness intelligence sensor, and it does what you think it does. Auto adjusts the screen brightness depending on the available light in the room, but it also adjusts the color temperature too. Uh, I never use auto brightness on anything I own and I can't stand when display color temperatures change. So I turned it off for most of my time with this monitor, but it's actually not too aggressive, which is what you want if you're looking for something like this. So if unlike me, you're actually concerned about your eyesight, this probably isn't the worst feature to have enabled. There's five navigation buttons, which I totally prefer over the shitty joystick type controls like on LG monitors for example, um, having multiple buttons just makes everything so much quicker. But then BenQ also gives us the option of setting two custom buttons, which I think is just genius. The on-screen display menu has all the standard stuff you'd expect to see, and it's pretty easy to navigate, but what I really liked was the selection of creator-focused pre-calibrated picture modes that are ready to go right out the box, so you can get to work without worrying about having to calibrate the colors yourself. Now, since it's a VA panel and not OLED, you're gonna get backlight bleed. Luckily, there's no edge bleeding, and what little backlight bleeding there is, it's so minimal, I doubt you'll ever notice. Viewing angles are decent. BenQ rates it at 178 degrees. Personally, I wouldn't go that far, but it's still very good. The overall look of the monitor isn't gonna win any awards or get you laid. It's more of an industrial look, and it's a bit on the thicker side since the power adapter is built into the monitor. It, it's not ugly, but it's not an eye catcher either, and there also isn't a ton of movement options. You can tilt it up 15 degrees and down five degrees, and that's about it. <laughs> Uh, I like the stand, it looks good even though it feels super cheap, but if you wanted a vase mount it instead, no worries, it can do that too. There's two HDMI ports, one display port, a USB-C port, and a headphones port, although it does have a couple of built-in speakers that sound pretty terrible if you didn't want to use headphones or external speakers. Now, that USB-C port is pretty handy for connecting to computers with USB-C display out capabilities, but I don't want you to get it confused with a Thunderbolt 3 port or really any type of data transfer because from what I understand, this is for display purposes only. Not only that, it won't actually charge your laptop either, so you'll need your power cable plugged in too, which really sucks. But at the end of the day, you know, I actually really like this monitor because you can game on it with a reasonable refresh rate and response time, and you can create on it with confidence thanks to that awesome color accuracy, all in 4K, but then you throw in HDR on top of all that, and now you've possibly just upgraded not only your gaming experience, but also your media consumption experience. And I'm seeing this on Amazon for like 600 bucks. So at 600 bucks for a 32 inch 4K HDR monitor with gaming capabilities and rad color accuracy, I mean, 
Dare I say this might be one of the best all around 4K HDR monitors for your dollar on the market? I do, I do dare to say that. Anyways, I'll leave a link in the description below in case you wanted to pick one up for yourself, but I think that about does it for this one. If you enjoyed the video, do show me some love with that like button. And if you're new here, don't forget to hit that subscribe button for new videos every week. But thanks as always for watching and I'll talk to y'all in the next one. Cheers.